So let's take a look at a frequency table. Now that we have this data, we collected it, right? We have an idea of what a distribution is, right? All the possible values in our data and then how often they come up, we create a table with that type of information, right? Here is a, a table, a frequency table for a categorical variable. Simple question, what's your favorite color? Again, this is not a highly technical survey and 10 people is not enough to really learn about uh, um, a population, right? But here's the raw data, blue, red, blue, yellow, green. Here's what the frequency table looks like. Here are your colors. Here's the frequency, how often. And here is a relative frequency. So it's the same information just described as a percentage or a proportion versus a, um, a, a number, right? Four, one, two. When you add that up, it's 10. That's the total. So, of course, when you add up the total frequencies, you'll get the total amount. You add up the total relative frequencies, you get 100% or 1 if you're looking at the decimal version of the percentage. Again, statisticians like the decimal version to do mathematics on, but when we describe and talk to people, we like the percentages, or some people like the number, the amount of people, right, um, as we look at that. There's not a cumulative frequency here, and we'll take a look at one of those, but it's not there right now. Um, here's another form of a frequency table for a quantitative variable. Again, not a scientific survey or a study, but just a simple example where you collect, uh, let's say you have 16 students, get their GPAs. Here's the, here's the raw data you can see here as it's displayed. And what we do for a quantitative variable we create uh, um, not categories because these are numbers. We call them classes or bins. We create uh, a set of values to say how many fit into this group, how many fit into this group. And so um, we call those classes and bins when we talk about a quantitative variable. Let's take a look at uh, uh, what that would look like. Like So if you had this set of data, right, and then we go ahead and then this is what it would look like here. So take a look at that, and then I want to show you how we create uh, some of these classes and bins as we have here. But again, this is a nice view of a, here's your classes or bins. This is your frequencies. Here's your relative frequencies. And now here's a cumulative frequency um, as we take a look at it and see it's keeping track. How many people had GPAs from 3.9 and below, right? And that would be 15. How many people have GPAs from 2.9 and below? And that would be 8. And that's what this number is keeping track of. Coming back to this table here of how to construct your classes, right? How do you determine the boundaries? This is now a technical place. place I want to just make sure we, again, um, review is that when we describe those classes, those uh, the set of values, there are three ways we could do it. And you'll see it three different ways. That's why um, it can get confusing, even though the idea is not confusing. How many GPAs are between 1.0 and 2.0? That's what that says here. I can also write it this way, 1.0 to 1.9. But notice the braces. That indicates I want all the values from 1.0 to 1.9, including 1.9. Here is I want 1.0 to 2.0, but do not include 2.0. That would be the limit, the upper bound. So I want everything below 2.0. That's the percent, per, the little, um, the parenthesis versus a brace. And then we have I could just write it this way between like the range of values from 1.1 through 1.9. So what we see, and then you can read the descriptions yourself. What we can see here is there are three different ways to communicate the size of these classes or bins that we're going to use to create a frequency table. Um, and those are the values we use to create what's called the class width. And you see that the distance between the start of each class values, how big do you make these bins or classes, actually has an effect on what the table looks like. And so there's a strategy or kind of a way sometimes you uh, pick and choose. But um, we'll use technology to create our uh, tables and, and displays as we think about that.